Okay, we have 20 minutes to run through how to adopt Power BI, which is more than enough time. Um, so thank you guys so much for being here. Can everyone hear me? Okay, I'm Italian, so usually I don't need a microphone, but this is a little different. So what we're gonna do today, uh, just a quick little agenda about me. Uh, I live in Chicago, I work at CompTIA, phenomenal company, uh, lead the business intelligence and the maturity and kind of growing the company to adopt and really uh, uh, usage for uh, Power BI throughout the organization. I help lead the Power BI user group in Chicago. And I've been doing Power BI since its inception. So uh, purpose and goal today, we have 20 minutes. I, well, there is another session tomorrow that's going to be this, but broken down for an hour. But for the next 20 minutes, um, we're gonna really talk about providing the framework and at least the structure. If you can't make the one tomorrow, the slides are meant as a way to kind of take at least a template. Um, I think really with Power BI and the governance, there's an amazing community. They have a great white papers in governance, but how often have you actually seen actual examples of adoption or m governance or management of Power BI, like real world examples? There's a lot of like top down, bottom down, business led, uh, IT led, but how many actual documents are f like, what do you actually do? What does it actually look like inside your company? Uh, so today we're going to talk about what are those basic pillars and what is the foundation for that. Tomorrow we're going to go in depth into the pillars and the foundation. So the framework model that um, kind of based on documents research is, uh, I say there's a foundation and then four pillars of that foundation. And we're going to talk about what is the overall foundation and we're going to talk about what's part of an adoption strategy, what's talking about uh, roadmaps and examples and templates, governance and standardization, and then actual rollouts. So foundation, to know what side you are on of the maturity model of Power BI is whether or not your company has a proven, agreed upon mission statement or maturity model. If you have a, um, uh, an actual statement that your company, your executives, your leadership knows, great, you're on the right track. Um, if you don't, then that should be something you focus on. In a maturity statement, before you do anything, before you implement usage or adoption or a uh, 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 SharePoint site, you should have some actual statement that's measurable, that documents and processes everything. And if you say, oh no, we, we adopt, we use the usage uh, reports, we have a long way to go. So there's so much more when it comes to usage and adoption. Um, so let's go to the adoption strategies and components. So. This is kind of, whether you're starting for the first time with uh, building out your Power BI team and uh, your framework for your company, or you already have something in place, this is something you can do on a recurring basis or kind of start from the ground up. The first pillar, we're gonna talk about three aspects of adoption. Discovery and feedback, revamp and building a foundation, and rollout and support. So discovery, one of the things that you start with you have a mission statement, you have a maturity statement. Uh, one of the things that is as important, I think, as possible is if you're starting from the ground up to build trust in your team, in your company, and for your end users. Because when you lose trust uh, with your end users, it is so hard to get it back. So if you currently have reports that are being used, great. Start with what, uh, what I call discovering feedback or scoping sessions. Meeting with every team, talking about what is their current reporting? How do they currently report? They might use Power BI, but they also download from Excel, but there's also a guy that does SSRS, and there's also a client that we bought, but you didn't know about it. So that we have five different reports that we use. One of them's in Power BI. And then going through and documenting with them, what are you trying to get? What is the ideal thing? What do you need to do, not just from a reporting point of view, but what do you need to do as the end user to accomplish your goal here at the, our organization? Talking about issues, concerns, like, well, you know, the big thing we want is probably a predictive model that looks at real world, real life time. You're like, great, we only have Excel files. There might be an issue there. So kind of going through what their desired state is and what are possible herders, hurdles. And what uh, we've done and what you do for every team is what we call a delivery project. And that's basically you making sure that the team knows that you've listened to them, you've understood them, and saying, okay, here's, our, here's where we are at, here's where we wanna be, here's our quick wins, here's our long term, here's things we need to work on as a team together. Um, actually, I need to go to the, yep, okay. Cool. So, discovering scoping is for your end users. 
The next part of discovering feedback is your own team, or it could be just you. Um, whether you have a team of 10 Power BI authors or creators, or you just, it's just you, is going through and documenting every report, every dashboard, every workspace in your organization, and saying what the purpose is and who's the audience. Uh, Steve Jobs, when he, created, when he introduced the iPad, and one of my favorite things he said is, we have a phone, we have a computer. If there's something in the middle, it must do something better than the others, unless it has no reason to be. So if you have a dashboard and a report or a workspace that has no reason to exist because it overlaps with three other reports, then you don't need it. Going through all of your dashboards and your content scanning, okay, why is this here and who, what is it serving and for who? Um, and then going through what do you need to do to organize it? So understanding, okay, we met with eight teams. Is that eight workspaces? Is that eight reports? What's the foundation for them? Is there any overlap? Um, going through and actually having a document that defines intention for content in Power BI. This is important for you, for your team, and for end users. And then the BI team, how are reports being created in your company? Is there a process? If someone requests a report, can you answer who it is? Should they be requesting a report? Do they need approval to request a report? And what are the next steps? Being able to answer those questions with any request or any update is as essential as um, being able to create a books marks or drill through. Um, but being able to document the process your team currently uses. Do you have a theme? Do you guys use a company co color theme? Is there a template? Are there universal KPIs that the entire company should know about or should be the same? Are there additional metrics for each team that you can um, that are focused on that team only that you don't need to necessarily get approval. Anything that's a hierarchy, is it QA'd? And then what are the data sources and the business logic throughout the company? Once we have the discovery and feedback, and again, there's a, unfortunately you thought your job was a lot of visualization reporting, I'm making your job now a lot of writing, uh, a lot of Word documents. Then we go into revamping. And again, this could be if you have nothing at all, or you have, you have something already in place. Uh, this, is some, this is your spring cleaning that you can do that is spring cleaning or starting from the ground up. So creating a process for everything in Power BI. I have now made you now a project manager as well. So now you are now an author, a report writer, and a project manager. Uh, there may be a few more roles that you guys get. I don't recommend putting all of this on your resume, but these are all roles that now we're taking on. Um, so process, the approval and management system. So if there's a new report being created, anything in Power BI service should any user, and you should know too, that has a stamp of approval from the BI team. Nothing in Power BI service or anything or any user should see, you should know what it is. Or you should know like, oh, who created that or what is that metric? Everything should, I, I'm gonna ask them, I'm gonna put ideas that Power BI say, add a stamp logo, add a stamp uh, icon. Uh, creating name and conventions for content. Uh, a lot of times we start creating things, we have our very small nomenclatures that we use, but thinking about the end user's experience. What, how are they navigating Power BI? They probably don't have access to the workspaces, so they're probably looking at shared with me or Power BI home. If you're using um, dashboards, I recommend doing a naming convention. So if you have marketing dashboards, saying MKT dash, then dashboard name. So when an end user is looking at shared with me, they can easily understand what they're looking at before they even actually see the dashboard themselves. When, just by looking at the name and the title of the content, they should have a good idea whether that's meant for them or not. And goal data sets and business logic. Again, we might be able to know the greatest DAX function or do a recurring loop in Power Query, which is phenomenal. Um, but if people don't understand the hierarchy or the levels and saying, okay, well, what is a product name or um, if, what is a recipe? I don't know what that is, and, but my other colleagues using completely other logic for this. So I don't trust the report at all. It doesn't matter what you can create in desktop if there's not an understanding on the fields and your business, how you're actually grouping things throughout the company. Consolidation, this is our spring cleaning, getting out the broom. This is going through and saying, does this have a reason to exist? No, get it out. Creating a new workspace is creating an admin for every workspace. Uh, basically, someone who's in charge of the content in that workspace. They not might be creating all the content there, but they're in charge of making sure that whatever's in their workspace, that they know what it is, who made it, and it's correct. Uh, removing reports with no purpose. 
again, going through and saying, this doesn't need to be, we're creating a new report, this is where everyone will have access to. And then team, any reports having a process for approval. Again, um, not everyone has the right to request a new report. And for those of you who think that's true, that's not the case, and it shouldn't be the case. We only have a limited time to do what we do. And in order to, get, to provide business value and make something that's valuable to the business, that's only going to be a few people or it's going to need approval. And finally, the part of this uh, revamping is governance and admin. And I'm going to talk a, real, a little about this later, but a data champions team. Because RB, you as a BI and you and your BI team may be able to understand like, oh, you know, we have five uh, levels of hierarchy for product, which is great. But if no one else in the company uses that, and they might have their own logic, again, you're not really communicating, you're not building any bridges. Um, and accessing, access, access and sharing, and what is that process? You create a report, you publish it, great, you have that process. Now, who deserves to see it? Or who should see it? Is it a leadership dashboard? Is it for sales? Is it, a, is it one of the reps who should only see their data their commissions, or is it someone that should be able to see only their team? And then change management for updates. So if you update a bookmark, or update a filter, or update a name, should, if anything that is what, what we'd call universal KPIs or universal logic, um, anything should go through a communication process throughout the company, or at least the people who are important. And finally, is rollout and support. So at, before creating all these great new reports and all this great new process, is having a way to communicate with your company saying, this is what we're planning to do. This is the new process. Uh, one of the things we did is called roadshows. Uh, roadshows going, meeting with every team saying, here's your new reports. By the way, this is the new process. Um, if you guys have a ticket system, is it structured? Do you understand what to do with a new report versus a uh, report, an update or break or fix? And then finally, establish a system of changes to updates reports. So one of the things we talked about in the beginning was that discovering feedback and those delivery projects. So one thing we want to, uh, want to show you is kind of a template for a road roadmap for teams. Anyone who creates reports knows that people want to see things now or yesterday. And if there's not coming tomorrow, they're a little upset. So providing people a way to actually see what's down the pipeline and being able to understand what's now and what's 100 days from now uh, we have a kind of a template that we use that's basically showing the entire teams. This is basically what we'd say for one team, what you would actually do is your scoping discovery, your interviews, giving a project plan, uh, sandbox reports, development and production, and training and education. I'm going to talk a little about these sandbox reports. Any report, I know that sometimes, some people call it development, some people call it prototyping. But allowing people to use, when you're, when you're starting a new report from the ground up, uh, creating a nice name we call sandbox reports that basically gives people something to play with to actually give you feedback. Rather than waiting three months to create a report and it's not exactly what a user wants, creating sandbox reports in a development workspace where people can actually provide feedback. And it's meant to throw things away. It's meant to go through iterations. And it's meant to, say, meant to inspire your end users. And it's meant to inspire your team. So let's look at an example roadmap. Basically, this is a slide that you can do or an entire Word document. Basically saying leadership, high-level reporting. What is our main objective for our team? Uh, and the main objective should be something that's signed off between the stakeholders of that team and you as the BI department. And basically, a roadmap, one a little nice touch, is in progress, 30 days, 90 days, 100 days. Governance of Power BI. And again, we're going to dive into this more uh, tomorrow. but. Part of this is what we're going to call data champions team. Um, and part, part of that is also the nomenclature and the terminology used in your company, um, making sure that, again, it's universal and it's understood. That if I talk to Jim in marketing about products, when he talks to Tony in sales, they understand what a product category is. And they have the same idea and the same understanding of that. Uh, so data champions team. And again, this is something that is part of governance, but not really part of a lot of Power BI documentation. And this is basically getting a representative from every team talking about basically uh, what, how do they use their terminology, what is their definitions, and getting everybody on the same page. Um, basically, they are responsible with you for the creation of the logic and the business rules. They understand their uh, team and their department intimately, and they come to an understanding together as a company. 
Internal team governance. Um, talking about making sure that everyone who's creating reports is on the same page, that they have a workspace to uh, publish to, and there's a deployment to actually giving access. Finally, rollout and support, uh, the final pillar. Uh, some of the strategies is promoting your team. Uh, having a team like, for example, at company at, uh, or, or bi at companyname.com. Having a SharePoint site, having uh, road shows and kind of establishing your team throughout the company as uh, um, just as important as sales, just as uh, mature as the sales department. Uh, road shows and training is one of the things that you can do where any new reports or any updates to Power BI that you're doing, meeting with all the teams individually, showing them new updates, showing them what their reports and how to use them, giving them education and giving them the power uh, through training. And part of that's com uh, promotion and communication. Any new bookmark or any new major change in Power BI, whether when Power BI introduced the uh, uh, personal bookmarks, having a communication plan to kind of provide that throughout the entire company. And finally is measuring adoption. And this is more than just the audit logs and uh, usage reports. Uh, going through, anytime you create a new report, going through and basically giving a feedback survey. Use Microsoft Forms saying, what was the experience like? Is this what you wanted? to kind of understand what, how the, your process is going and modify it. So again, tomorrow we're going to go a full breakout. It'll be more interactive uh, questions. We're going to use the same uh, format as this, but we're going to go through more, if anyone has questions, it'll be more interactive. Uh, evaluate this session uh, on your mobile app, and thank you guys so much. So.